Hello and welcome, my name is Farzad Mesbahi and today I'll be reviewing Tesla's version 11 holiday update from the perspective of a former Tesla employee. I worked at Tesla from July of 2017 through September of 2021 and I've owned multiple Teslas through that time. I've had a couple Model S's with my wife and we've also purchased a Model Y as of very recently, a performance model. And we've had a lot of exposure to the UI, how the cars behave, and me working at the company, I've also had a lot of exposure to the inner workings of Tesla and how they arrive at certain decisions and things like that. And today I would like to sort of give my opinion on what I think of the newest update. And so I'll break this video up into three major segments. I'll share what I like about the update, I'll share what I don't like about the update, and I'll also give a few of my recommendations in case you know Tesla watches this for whatever reason on what I think might be a, a better change to the new UI. And without further ado, let's get going. So the first thing I do like is making the FSD UI bigger. So you have the option of essentially you know, using your finger and I'll put a little screenshot on here to make the FSD UI bigger. So a couple reasons why I like that. One is if somebody wants to be fully immersed in the way the car is behaving and, and how it's viewing the world, I think that's a good thing, especially with how new the technology is. I think that's a great thing for users, but I also think it's a great change for those of us that wanna make beta videos and put them out there in the world for others to see. It allows the entire screen to be taken up by what the car can see, and therefore, when you have a camera pointed at the screen, you have the entire real estate taken up by that FSD UI. So I think they probably had that in mind when they made that change, uh, but overall, I think it's a great thing to highlight where the Teslas are gonna go in the future from a self-driving perspective. So I give that a, a thumbs up. The other thing I really like as well is the customizable icon tray where you can drag and drop the different apps that your car has. This is probably in preparation for more apps to come down the pike. You know, you think the, you know, if you think about how the car is gonna to continue to be more software and Elon has referenced it as a, you know, as a sort of a computer on wheels or a robot on wheels, that only makes sense and that seems like they've really invested time in ensuring that the foundation is set up so that that can come down the road and then you can pick and choose which apps you wanna show on the bottom of your screen. The other thing I really like about the new UI is that they move the speed to the leftmost corner, so the left upper corner of the screen, which gets it as close as possible to the driver. I really do like that. I think, I think anything to make it so that it's easy for the driver to know what the car is doing, especially very key data like speed, is very, very important, especially if they're the ones taking control of the car. Uh, that's great, and I think that move is is very good. I also really like the addition of the blind spot camera. I think that's a, you know, honestly, I'm surprised it took this long. I think as soon as the cars came out with them, you know, multiple cameras on the sides, I don't know why that wouldn't have been included from the beginning. Maybe they were pocketing it for, for a later update or something, but that's a great move. I really like that it's for both sides, left and right. I think maybe this is not the case anymore, but I remember uh, for a certain time, you only had, certain cars only had it for the right, like the passenger driver's side for a blind spot camera. But this obviously makes a lot of sense where you can have both sides on the Tesla because obviously it has four cameras. I think it'd be interesting to see if they use the pillar camera, so the one that's on the B pillar, which is you know between the front and the back, that camera there, if they would ever think about doing that, but there's probably not much use for that unless the car's right next to you. And I'm not really sure if the, you know, if the blinker camera would be enough to see that car there. Maybe there's some sort of way to maybe put a you know UI thing that says, hey, you might not see something here, but maybe the camera is like red or something that says, hey, but they're actually immediately right to you, but at that point, they're probably at your peripheral. So curious to see if that ever happens, but they probably don't even need to. But the blind spot camera, great change. And then lastly, the light show is awesome. We actually, for Christmas, we took our car outside. We live in a really, uh, you know, it's a lot of kids in our neighborhood and we took the car outside and we did a light show for the neighbor kids and uh, they freaking loved it. Uh, they had a ton of fun just watching the car sort of, you know, flashing lights at them and the trunk opening and closing. And I think the fact that we were able to now customize light shows speaks to Tesla's ability to be so good at marketing through their product and not having a marketing budget. So it's almost like their software team and their you know engineering team, part of their pay is marketing because why else would you think of something like this, right? It's to it's to market your product, it's to get it out there so that people can create YouTube videos and get it out the get it out for the world to see. So brilliant change. I really like this when Tesla really thinks about how to market the car through the car 
and a light show for every model is a brilliant addition and honestly probably my favorite one because that's probably the one that's going to get them the most attention for any future sales down the road not that they need it to be honest but um, that was a great move and i'm really happy that every car has that now not just the model x now let's get on to the things that i don't like the first thing i don't like is how small the drive selector letters are so park reverse neutral drive and then also the steering wheel is so tiny you know and that is the primary way that people know if autopilot's available for one. And then they also look to that wheel to see if it's activated, right? Aut autopilot and full self-driving. Now you could make an argument that, you know, with the full self-driving picture, you know, the, the UI that you have in the car and everything, the blue line will tell people, okay, this this is now an autopilot and full self-driving. But I don't I don't know if that's super intuitive. I don't I don't really know if that's a that's a good idea. So I would really want that steering wheel to be much bigger. It's almost like they have plenty of room to the right of that uh, speedometer to put a gigantic wheel. You know, there's really nothing there. So I think making a gigantic wheel there and having it be your autopilot on or off thing is probably better. But yeah, it, it's probably just something we have to get used to if they choose not to change it. But I just think, especially with the amount of attention full self-driving is getting nowadays, and it'll continue to get in the coming months and, and years, probably behooves Tesla to really spend a lot of time ensuring that it's as, as obvious as possible that full self-driving is available or autopilot's available and that it's currently on. I think that would remove a lot of nerves for those that are not sure the you know, the technology or when they have the car, they wanna make sure that it's on or off. And it's a very easy way for them to know if it's on or off, if you have a gigantic icon telling them it's on or off. And um, in addition to that, I just think it's it just it's good UI, right? It's, it's a good UI practice, but I wasn't a software engineer. What do I know? But I just feel like there's some improvements there. The second one, and it's it's very personal for me, for my use case is uh, Homelink, the Homelink button on the UI. When you press it, it brings up the entire control panel and I don't I don't know why that is it seems like it seems like the top of the control panel has a lot of different icons that are also shared with the top of the screen and when I hit home link to you know turn my garage door open or closed it brings up the entire thing with the icon as well and with the drop down of hey click on your garage I don't I don't get that that's weird that seems to me like a bug maybe you know the the module is, is attached to the to the you know to that control window and it has to call that window when it presses on the, you know, the, the screen, the map screen, and it's a shortcut. That's odd, especially when I'm leaving the house and, you know, I don't have auto open or close on home link. Anytime I press that and I have, you know, I have a map set up to either make a left or right turn out of my, out of my house, it brings that up. And then I'd be like, okay, so where do I got to go? I got to go left or right. And then I got to bring that thing down again. Additional clicks for something that simple doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But yeah, that's another thing that I don't like. And it's very specific to me, but it's something that <laughs> really bothered me for some reason. Like, why? Why is this coming up? Why is it blocking my view of where I'm going? I don't understand, but uh, hopefully they change that. And then the third one that I really don't like, and, and this one's shared across many different people, and I, I honestly do not understand why they did this, but there's a big lack of quick access buttons. Things like the seat warmer, you know? Uh, there's no easy way to view your tire pressure, for example. Sentry mode. Quick capture is inside a different menu now. Profile switching, you know, something as simple as that. My wife and I share the car. We have to go, we have to do two clicks, really three clicks, because we have to bring up the control, then click on the thing, and then click on our name instead of just clicking on our name and changing it. Doesn't make a lot of sense. Why, why do we need to do that, right? And the thing that's even more baffling is that if you look at the bottom of the screen and the top of the screen, there's a lot of real estate to put those buttons. At the very least, a uh, seat warmer button and the quick capture as well, you know, kind of return those two things to where they were. But if you really think about it, there's a lot of room at the bottom, there's a lot of room at the top, and there's also a lot of room to the right of the speedometer, sort of where the full self-driving UI exists. Why not use that space for quick access buttons, you know? And I think this sort of speaks to a broader point around ensuring that new Tesla customers are very comfortable making the transition. I think there is a lot to be said about how Tesla approaches things very differently when it comes to UI or the car or everything like that. They put a lot of effort to ensure that it's the best possible experience. But I also think that there needs to be a little bit of a balance moving forward, especially as Tesla starts selling millions of cars a year. You're really going towards a market that never thought about buying an EV or a car that advanced maybe two years ago. And all of a sudden they're like, okay, maybe I do want to put you know money down and buy a Tesla, right? I think having uh, as many of those buttons available will make the transition for those folks very, very easy. Because from my experience, what I've found is that folks that are more, I guess, you know, down market or not as not as 
exposed to the sort of high tech cars that they would be buying, right? Small things like putting on your uh, heater for your seat or your windshield wipers, right? These are very, very simple things that people are used to. And that could be the thing that, you know, <laughs> turns them from a huge fan of Tesla to like, well, what the hell? You know, why, why can't my car do this? My, you know, my $15,000 Honda Civic can do it. Why can't my, you know, $40,000, $50,000 Tesla do that? They have to be careful with that because I, I do think, you know, not that Tesla is not really gonna impact them too much, I don't think, but at the same time, if the goal of Tesla is to make as many people as happy as humanly possible, convenience is very, very important. And if you have the real estate on the screen, you should use it, right? You should use it. That's my opinion, you know, I could be wrong. You know, the, maybe Tesla has an overarching thought that says, okay, well, everything's gonna go self-driving anyway. Let's start getting drivers used to it. You know, maybe it's, maybe it's right around the corner and people will have to think about it. But at the same time, there's gonna be a large percentage of the population, at least to start, that are going to be very, very much willing to drive their cars for at least the next three to five years at least, right? There's just gonna be a period of time where people need to get used to that technology and, and trust the machine. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm honestly a little baffled by that decision. It could be that maybe there was a deadline to be hit inside and you know the, the folks were focusing on all the really cool things and the, and the big improvements, you know, maybe from a speed perspective or an overhaul of how the UI functions. And maybe they said, okay, but you know, these small changes, you know, sort of the icons and everything like that being very quickly accessible, put that in a separate update and, and, and whatever. But I think they have to be careful, especially, you know, as their fleet grows, you gotta be careful about that because taking away that convenience from folks usually doesn't work out well. But, but we'll see, we'll see what happens here in the next couple months. Hopefully a new update comes up that fixes that issue. But for me, that's, that's a very, it's weird. It's really weird, but but that's where we are, uh, that one I don't like. And now I like to go through my recommendations for what I think should be, you know, these aren't likes or dislikes, these are more like, hey, I think if we if we work on getting these in the car, it might help. So one of the big ones that I miss is the, the energy graph. So uh, when we had a Model S, you were able to sort of have the energy graph uh, available in your dash on the front, where you could see for the last 30 miles what your energy expenditure looked like and what your regeneration looked like. There seems to be a lot of room to the right of that spirometer on the UI. And there is like the top, call it fourth of the UI screen on the left side of the screen is basically blank space. Why not put the graph there? You know, just put the graph there, make it super sleek, just a line and a, you know, orange for expenditure, green for regen. That'd be cool, right? And it, it doesn't really take up any space. And that co could almost be like a widget, like a widget area, right? Maybe you can swipe down and go energy, calendar, I don't know, kind of like your iPhone or Android widgets, you know, something like that might make sense. Seems like there's a lot of room for it, you know, uh, it's something to think about. The other thing I think would make a lot of sense is the speedometer itself. So the, the speed gauge, you know, if you're going 20 miles an hour, it's white, it's always white, right? Why not also make that blue once you have full self-driving on, right? Make the make the letters blue or make the numbers blue rather, right? Why not? You know, that seems like an easy change. It seems like it seems like something that will be simple to implement. And yeah, it seems like a pretty straightforward thing. So why not do that, right? Turn the turn the numbers blue. The other one as well is, and this is for me, like I used to live in Pennsylvania and we we had a lot of cold weather. Having the fog lights available as a toggle would be super helpful, especially when, you know, it's freezing cold outside and you got a bunch of fog or snow coming down and you know the fog light really helps you see a little bit more in front of you as far as what you're dealing with with the ground. I think having that as a, as a quick access would be very important. And really, I think Tesla should really focus on getting cold weather usability into the screen as much as possible. And I think this might be sort of a, they're not, they're kind of blind to it because the factory is in Fremont, a lot of the engineers are in Fremont. Now they're gonna be in Texas. Texas and California are not really known for cold weather or snow or anything like that. I think there should be a lot more attention paid to that moving forward. And, and the car can be so much more friendly for folks that drive in cold weather if you just move certain icons to the, as quick access, like the fog lights, especially the, the, heated, the, the heated seats, heated um, windshield washer fluid. These are obvious things, I think. And I think it would help usability a lot. And then the last one, which is sort of a, I don't know if this was always the case or it came with this UI, but if you set a favorite on your navigation and you say, okay, you know, I, 
H-E-B on Bloss Street is my favorite store and I like to go there. You know, I wanna see what the traffic is always like there. Sentry mode defaults to not recording in those areas or maybe it doesn't default. Maybe I turn them on, I don't know. Somebody, hopefully somebody can check me on this and, and let me know if, if this is the case, but it seems like it does default to those locations to be skipped for sentry mode. I think that should be removed completely. It should be an optional sort of click. It's like, do record at home. Do record at favorites as a default, and then a user would go in and check those off. Hopefully, I may, I may have done this in the past and I went and I checked them. If somebody could comment for me in the, in the comments below if this is actually the case or not, that would be very, very helpful. But I think if it's, if it's not the case and it does default to skipping, I think that's not good because I still want my car to be monitored at my favorite places, you know, just because I go there often or to my favorite places doesn't mean that I don't want my car to be safe, right? So um, super small thing. I could be wrong because I, I literally can't remember if this is the case and I can't find anything online that tells me if it's defaulted or not. Uh, but if somebody could help me find that, that would be amazing. Thank you. But I do think overall it's a good update. I think I think the way that they're changing the UI to be a little bit more modern, it it, it has that design language of the new Model S and X. It has uh, a closer design language to the Cybertruck UI that we saw when the Cybertruck was shown for the first time. Some of the changes make a lot of sense. Light show is freaking awesome, and and yeah. But but I do think if if Tesla spends more time making quick access a bigger deal, especially as the fleet continues to grow and a lot of new customers come for Tesla, it's gonna make the transition even that much easier. It's really gonna remove that variable of, oh my God, my, again, my $15,000 my $15, car can do this. How come my Tesla can't do that, right? We should remove that from, from the conversation entirely because we can, because the screen's there, you know? Real estate's there. Now, I would love to hear your opinion. Do you agree with my likes? Do you disagree with my likes? Do you think my recommendations are bogus? Or, you know, I'm also curious to see what you like or don't like about the new UI and what the recommendations would be from your side as well. I think that the, the brilliant thing about Tesla is that they, they do take feedback really well. And from my experience working there, I mean, it, I was constantly getting feedback and I was constantly giving feedback, right? So uh, it's a company that's rooted around collecting the best possible information to make the best decisions possible. And I think videos like these can only help them become better. And customers should always feel empowered to voice their opinions, especially for a company like Tesla, because they are good at listening. Sometimes they get caught up too much on really doing something cool and they forget about the, you know, the not so cool things that are just simple but extremely useful. But I do think it's important for all of us to share that. So let me know what you think. Share your thoughts down below. If you wanna keep seeing content from me, please subscribe. If you like what you saw today, throw me a like. If you wanna support me through Patreon, I have a link in the description below. And I wanna thank you very much for stopping by. Greatly appreciate your time. I hope this was a helpful video and we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, bye-bye.